Are you sure about this, folks? We're giving over the Callista, which Elk has run the entire league on. I mean, yes, you can then get an AD carry counter pick a little bit later, but it really does feel like, you know, Knights is here. Is that what you want to be first picking? This is not the champion which I want to see Knight on. You're giving over a lot of important things. Freem on the Talir, which can roam out of lane much easier than the Azir because of the global ultimate. The Callista for Jackie Love now, who is incredible on this pick too. I wonder whether BLG needs to reconsider what's happening here. It's a tough one because you have so many strong picks making it through that mobility out of mid lane, but this makes a difference. On on the Nico could have some really big engages, which is what BLG were lacking last game that the desk talked about. That's a great call, actually, yes. So now you've taken that Nico, which can be a flank threat. The thing about the support Nico is that if you fall behind, you are paper. You die very, very oh, quickly. Yeah. I think most of the time we've been seeing um, the Callista go towards the, the, the Halo Blade Lethality variant as well. It is a poke Callista, so you play from a longer range. That means the Nico has a harder time reaching them. So, really need to see how Elk and On play from the laning phase. It's been solid from them so far. And that's Tian who picks up that fire on the other side. They will be trying to go through the hail of arrows and the sand soldiers to try and reach the carries in this game. It will indeed. I think that setup is uh, also important. But in the second phase, the most interesting thing is how many jungle bands do we get towards soon? Right now, we're starting off with the one. Zin Zhao taken off the table by top esports. But uh, with that buy locked in, you're definitely trying to dwindle down Shun's champion. So, bot side with a, with a Callista and a Varus, it is always going to be about the early fights. We've seen every time there's a kill lane, these junglers go bot lane and they try and make the, bone, the, the best of things. I think that you know, removing um, some of the early power picks from Tian, very, very important. What else can you remove, though? He did this with a Maokai. You don't necessarily yeah. need to have the level 3, you know, the uber, o uber early game fighting champions. Like <laughs> a Vi, like a Shin, so you can do it with something like that, too. We actually get the Wukong, so more respect being given over to Shun. The Camille, a band towards 369, potentially, or with that support role, because the Camille uh, is a pretty good What, do you think it's going to be, do you think it's going to be like the, the, the Nico top, flex something else into support <laughs> I'm not, like, not going to throw too much heresy around. That stuff needs to stay inside of you, folks. All the same. Has been a couple of top lane bands, all the same. And of course, yeah, the Camille calls away from 369, so a bit different. Uh, well, not even 369, it would have been the uh, yeah. support mm -hmm. I get it now. <laughs> it all makes sense. It's all full circle. Full circle. Now we are looking for dive partners for TM. Now, it's something which, you know, I think Think Troubles talks about it a lot. When you're playing Vi, it's very good to have some follow-up. I think sometimes having long-range ultimates can help with that. Rumble ult can help. But a Rakan flying in alongside you as your very literal wingman helps yeah. a lot. And especially when it's Mink. I think uh, the, the biggest boon for top esports has been the fact that Mako can not only play 2v2, but he is so active on the map of TM. And with the Rakan, he will be more than active. The Renekton is locked in for Ben here, so maybe throwing down the gauntlet to 369 a little bit. Now Shun, what's he going to go towards? He could have gone towards something potentially like a, what was the pop he's banned out, but you know, you're still looking for something early game presence if you can. It does fit that draft again. When you have something like that, Varus and Nico, you want something that could help them out that recent difficult to play in let's go so it's not going to be that he says look look at this talia look at this guy i don't necessarily want to be playing diving into them because the amount of cc let's go towards the kindred instead give shun the sticks last time around game number four kindred didn't work out very well for him but this time around with the support mm. around him especially with the setup from on on the nico it's gonna be really big but they're giving the onus to this guy for his second finals and it's the last pick. Oh, this is just wonderful. Okay, this yes. is wonderful. So we get shot on Kindred. That can't, that's, a, that's a great historical pick for him. But 369's Kragus is legendary. This guy plays it both the AP and the full tank variant as well. He can play a bit to both with the Rod of Ages kind of being the halfway house. We'll see what build he goes towards. But it doesn't matter what items he has in there. Just his ability to outplay with the CC, the team fight, the lane with this champion is so big. Against Bins Renekton, and that top lane matchup might actually now be quite fun, specifically because of 369. <laughs> <laughs> big man with the plan. No Gragas enjoyer, but also just something really important for the spacing of top esports team fight. And that's what I want to talk about next is how they approach the team. <laughs> I think particularly when you've got the CC of the Rakan, of the Vi, when you have someone to lock people in place, the Casket is going to pump people out into the place that you want them as well. I think Top Esports, they put together a very strong team fighting composition. I think their carries are good. I think their disruption is good as well. I'm really looking at 369 to uh, stand up in particularly this game. It's not necessarily been a series of top laners so far. I think 369 can make it about him, though, in this game. In game number five last time around Top Esports, the coach felt like he, they had the right plan. They had the way to attack BLG. 
in a game four, your back's against the wall. Yet again, you've got to make that execution matter. Last game was not clean, but you staved yourself from darkness. And now game four needs to continue that momentum forward. BLG on the blue side. This is their second finals ever as an organization. And they're still one step away from claiming that Silver Dragon Cup. It is a daunting task ahead of both of these teams, I suppose, but particularly top esports in this game because they have not won on red side versus BLG. That challenge starts now. Crowd still in it to win it and get the level ones yet again. That had been commonplace so far for these early games. Well, I'm now wondering with Callista making their way towards topside, as a topside invade, are we going to get ourselves a lane swap? We That's will what see. they said the choice was last time. We will see what's going to happen. Well, let's just see how far Jackie Love goes, because what you can do is have the top and the jungle stick together. With this, it looks like there was a potential option there, but just look at where Jackie Love's going. That'll be the telling sign. BLG, they don't exactly have advanced notice on this. They don't have the, the, the all of the wards available to it. it looks like we're going towards where is Jackie Love going man he's just <laughs> moving towards mid lane keep forgetting the question it looks like it's going to be standard lanes the question has been answered none of those shenanigans this time not just yet but I think a, a big thing we talked about last game was the undersung current of night for BLG so far especially against top esports where he hasn't felt like the main character Cream had main character energy last game oh, yeah. and I think for a guy who is in his first split on an organization that has been known the, the top tops uh, for top esports, but also with four extreme veterans, it was so nice to see him pick it up. Yeah, for sure. And you know, now we've got, you know, Knight on the Azir again. This is not a champion he is famous for. He is famous for a lot of champions. This is <laughs> one which a lot of people have criticized over time. His last game in the series was good though. I'm not going to complain about that one. Feels like in this time, he's again going for the tank build. When he's been playing at this split, it has been about the tank Azir. I think that's important in this game. You have two other carries to go towards. You're going to be a bit more of an engaged threat and threatening that back line. Well, maybe someone like Shun or Elk can deal with that uh, extra damage that needs to come out. So bot lane still going to be the name of the game, it feels like, between these two. Elk last game went like 10 and something, ridiculous yep. on the Varus. But for me, it's the fact that we do have uh, some bot side pathing right now for Tien, opposite side for Shun. Uh, that's why it's kind of important that Mako's getting chunked out, because if Mako is low HP, they can't go for big plays. Mako hitting Qs, though, on Rakan. Means that HP gets to be regen back a little bit. You need to really keep an eye on that Rakan HP bar. If that's low, you can't really go for bot side plays. Want to flip things up towards the top though. Talked about 369 on mm -hmm. Grags. Again, this guy is a legendary top lane. He can play tanks, he can play bruises, he can play carries, he can play everything right now. Um, but particularly this Gragas, which also has builds, which are all of the yeah. above. You can actually <laughs> do all of those builds there. This champion really stands out in his champion pool, and particularly against stuff like the Immobile backline, and also the Kindred ult. Very, yeah. very big in this draft. Very, very big, and I think the matchup itself, very big. We've seen them have big influences on the backline in all these fights, but it's also two legendary top laners. Ben, Getting to go back to MSI, you know, where he yeah. had a pentakill on Camille, not too shabby. But it's seriously been a split about integrity and growth through that top lane. The difference we've seen in the, in the picks and the flexibility between tank and carry for 369 and the growth of that for Ben as well. Absolutely. I think, you know, Ben, he's a player with a lot of depth in his history. You know, he's, he's a world finalist. He's an MSI winner. Um, he's an MSI finalist from last year as well with RNG, of course, not with BLG from last year. Even that, he reached the finals at that point. This guy is uh, <laughs> this guy's got history to him. Shun, a little less international history because, of course, it really was just last year where that started to come about. But particularly on this Kindred regionally, he is one of these Kindred players to be feared. It is somewhat, and not all of it, but he is somewhat of a regional specialty between players yeah. like Shun, um, like, of course, Milky Way as well. And he had like a 66% win rate, I think, before the last series that he had yeah. where they took the loss against Top Esports. But it's definitely something where it changes the style of approach from BLG, where they did have a lot of facilitation from Shun for majority of this game. Now he's on the carry. Yeah, he is. It does mean it's harder to look for dives. You have three very squishy champions. All you're realistically doing here is poking. Shun walks down, and you force them under turret. You're not really doing that level three dive threat, which BLG has made an absolute lethal weapon against so many other teams. Um, another quick thing I want to talk about on bot side as well, just a quick last hit on this, is not the poke virus for once. It's definitely going to be the on hit mm -hmm. lethal tempo, which means that Jackie Love will be more about the extended damage in the fight. He needs to play from a closer range because it's auto attack rather than that big Q pierce range instead. But interested now to see whether Jackie Love can pilot this in the positioning manner you need to. That's been one of the biggest questions about Callista. We've seen so much back and forth with the lethality and the sustained damage carries. Uh, <laughs> 
just uh, using some vision control with his clone there. Gotta get a decent amount of damage on a Mako. You gotta watch those piercing arrows on the back side, but now we also have the objectives coming up. And with this priority bot side, BLG should be able to take first drag. They can do if they want. Um, remember, there have been a couple of times they've had priority bot lane, they've chose to kind of forgo that first dragon instead. You can see that Tien, he's on vision. You know that he's on the bot side of the map, and that's gonna take away the Gromp, which is, of course, uh, okay. so that's fine. Now he's running. Oh! oh, oh. <laughs> Cream trying to strut his stuff against Knight there. I like to see it. No, it's not like is the golden left hand's quick, man. He He's is quick. very quick, and also he has like just held that shoulder. I was like, I've got a shield for my E. I'm gonna be fine. <laughs> so he ends up winning that mind game. That's important though, actually, because it is. Um, that's a flash blown before level six from Knight. Now Knight can end up losing that shuffle in there. Cream. You no, know, he had a fantastic main character game last game. Now, without a flash coming up against Shun and Knight with their level sixes, particularly for that Azir coming up, big moment for him to now play safe. And I also think this is a big moment for Cream to start branching out with that Weaver's Wall. He's not going to get that uh, that moment right now when the objectives are being taken out, but that is something to look forward to from Cream because that is a staple of how top esports can win this one, is the side lane pressure or the block offs of the Weaver's Wall. Meanwhile, BLG had started up the Dragon and will secure it. He will do. Jackie Love is on a reset. No chance of him walking in towards that play as well. So BLG take the dragon on a good timing to make sure the Callista cannot be a part of that fight. Uh, Grubs not been taken just yet. There's a pink board in the back of the pit from uh, from Tian, I believe. He might have put that one over just there. But Top Esports, they have information on um, whether that was going to get started up. And now he will be starting those up. The 1v1 on top side here. Bin trying to take down 369. The cast comes through. 369 walks away. It's been just uh, using that Dominus to make sure it's a strong uh, strong trade. It also means that the cask not available from 369 for a big fight that could happen on top side. And actually with this set, now Tien, wow. Tien, so what Tien ended up doing was jumping into the back of the pit, taking one, then jumping out. I think as soon as the cask is using that ground, yep. you think, look, okay, let's not go for it. Um, Renekton is a champion. I know a lot of people have had issues with him over different seasons of League, but particularly, it doesn't matter what season it was, he was always good around playing the six, seven, eight minute mark um, in top side of the map. With that first Dominus of the game, you don't want to take fights against a high Rage Renekton. He especially was the first time below that out. Did you know that crocodiles have over a thousand pounds of bite force? Um, is it gonna bite one of these guys in top lane right now? No, he's not, fine. No. Nobody wants to go into the river uh, where uh, I love, I love, the, I, love the croc is. I love this. Where it's just like I, I, I almost want there to be a documentary playing in the players' ears at this point. It's like you try and gank the Renekton. Do you know he's got a thousand pound bite force? <laughs> and they're like, oh, no, no, funnily enough, Mazel, I didn't know that. I'm going to leave top lane. <laughs> oh yeah, I think it's a good call. Uh, little things you pick up as a zookeeper here and there. But uh, I do wonder how they can approach that one because. 369 on his Gragas is going to have so much to deal with in the late game as well. I did know that crocodiles have very weak opening draw muscles, though. So you can yes. hold them shut. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why you can, like, yes. you see, like, Steve Wrestling. Irwin and stuff yeah, is, yeah. like, playing with it. Yeah. yeah. So you just need to hold the mouth shut somehow. Um, <laughs> somehow. How does that apply to this? We will figure that out. Um, stay with have us some, like, leather one. straps or something for top piece boards. <laughs> Tie that mouth down, man. Ben is going to have some fun. Uh, I do wonder, though, now that we're getting close to those first items, we actually had the stop off for the boots for Jackie yep. Love to get some of that mobility on the hops, skips, and jumps. But now, Shun looking for a ah. mark here on the team. No, Tien so just uses smite onto the blue buff, so he can't smite away the Gromp, and that's an all coming oh, in from awesome. They're going to flash. They know he has nothing left, and they want a mark so badly for Shun. He's going to flash. He's going to get it. And that's the first one and first blood for BLG. Oh, no. Jackie Love going to flash. He does get the piercing arrow to the back, but BLG strike first on bot lane. He does. And now, if you get the Gromp here as well, I'm pretty sure that Shun is just about to get his four marks. They're going to use gonna the Nico clone to cancel no the way. back. Oh, the Piercing arrow doesn't hit, but the hail of arrows does, and Al gets one. It's the bot side jungle bot lane combination again. Two kills in the bot side. You get so much gold onto some very important carries, and Jackie Love on the Callista cannot live under bot lane turret. This could be such a big moment. And how are we nine minutes in, and BLG have a 2,000 gold lead? So much of it is about Shun using this Kindred early game as an absolute wrecking ball. As soon as this champion was released, the favorite thing for Kindred to do is walk into enemy junglers and just fight them. Flashes beyond the grand entrance, blocks out that VQ, so it means he can't escape. Fantastic use of that summoner spell from Shun to win out on that fight. God, I'm gonna cry. They haven't even won yet, man. Like, this guy <laughs> is popping off against TN, man. Like, how do you do this? The growth from this guy from IG to BLG has been insanity. And, you know, top esports on the other side, you know, so many big players on this roster, which 
Now gonna have to fight against another deficit from BLG. They cannot afford to lose focus this time. There aren't any ash arrows this time for Mako to throw at them, which is a big thing. Actually, Mako's was huge at that point. So that's a flash Ooh. away from Knight. Here comes on. Oh no, he's completely locked down now. The Fates Call coming in as well from Jackie Love. They have the Lands Respite there, buying so much sustained time, though Knight will end up falling to Cream. Jackie Love has stepped forward now on and Shun there to back them off. It is a kill given over, though. It is, and Knight uh, flashes out of a short range combo. It does get that Lands Respite, but it's not enough to give him complete ability to turn that play around on Aldom's the map. Here comes oh, Mako! That Tangle Barb was massive, but he still goes down in the end, and it's, of course, Jackie Love who picks up the kill. Well, if you're not winning in bot lane, move the bot lane somewhere else. That's exactly what happens from top esports. They take Jackie Love and Mako, and they make some huge plays in the mid lane. What is this, this at the cost of, though? You're losing huge amounts of gold towards this bot side. You have a teleport coming in to continue okay. the cross map coming through. They got to keep the tempo going. They got to keep the momentum going. They do not want to be dragged down in a 3-1 series as Cream gets the Chains of Corruption over from Elk. It is not followed up on. They did deny him for a little bit, but he did end up getting that turret in the side lane. While this is happening, so this is an extended cross map for cross map, right? Top as they go mid, they try and respond to bot lane because Elk has stood that. Let's be careful here now. Cream does that flash. He might have been forced to blow it again. Even just a Dirk on... Um, on the Varus is enough to give a huge amount of damage, but still, with the extra cross map, BLG are going to get themselves a likely five grubs towards top side. So, with the grand scheme of things, yes, good kills from top esports. That's gold. That's important to take away some stuff like flashes away from Knight, so he's a bit easier to pick off as well. Maybe 369 can use a cast to threaten him in the next fight. But they do lose out on those grubs, so we need to see whether BLG can use that to really wreck some towers. Five grubs, pretty big for this comp as well. A little bit of siege potential there. Dragon will be traded back over for those. Elk has hit his first item spike on that opportunity. We also got the Kraken Slayer for soon. Do so. We're starting to get towards those big damage moments. And that means that when you misstep, things are going to go out of hand very, very quickly. The one person I really need to highlight in regards to that, On, has had great early games. His mid game and last game, though, <laughs> was off. That was off. That was, on, that was the off. Yeah, on, it's, off. it's the okay. switch, folks. It's the switch. And I really want to see it on this Nico. The big problem is this champion is very, very squishy if you fall behind. He's up here trying to make a play towards top side. 369, though, has the Sunfire Cape. He's going for the full tank. Shin's on top side. Realistically, can you actually dive this, though? I don't think so. That's a fifth mark for Shun, slowly but surely hitting. I mean, that's insane. Yeah. You're 12 minutes in, and you already have your first spike. Seven is the next one. You're on five. Yeah, the extra range increase, very important. If you can use it to make it a little harder for Vi to get Qs onto you, for the Talir to get a big combo onto you as well, it means that the Kindred can fight easier. It is still a hard game for a Kindred, regardless of the amount oh, of marks you have. Because if suddenly you have a um, Vi pinging you with the ultimate into a Talir, into the Gragas, you're going to get displaced a million miles away from your home of uh, the Lambs Respite. And you're also going to just get burst out all the same. So Shun's positioning needs to be perfect. Let's talk about top esports a little bit more. They have so much CC. The coordination and the execution is going to be the biggest question for them. Oh, yeah! Absolutely. I think that top esports, you know, I think one thing which you can always say about this team is typically that they are very How? coordinated. It's another mark. Six. How does he do this? One more mark, he gets that next range increase like you're talking about. Of course, it's even with minutes. that, even with that, the damage, the attack speed from your Q, the damage from your W and your E as well goes up. Elk, no, no. Oh, 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 oh. Elk. <laughs> That's a big boy right there, Elk. You gotta be careful. He does have his friends, and you know, friends are more powerful than a solo member. They do have the double marksman up here, and 369. He's gonna be rolling some threes here, and he gives over a kill to Elk. Oh, he almost finds the angle. Tien just around the corner, could have done something special, but instead, gifts over a kill all the same. Four Pete, look, he wanted to be the four Pete champion. Honestly, it feels like in this game, he's found himself uh, even on his recognized Gragas in a bit of an awkward spot. And the biggest, the starkest difference from the last time we saw Shun take the Kindred into Tian, he didn't even have four marks by like 20 something yeah. minutes. This is a resurgence in a style on the blue side that BLG are comfortable with. They have moved their pressure to top side and they're trying to take another outer turret. Again, at least getting that teleport out. You have the five grubs, makes it so threatening to go on these towers. And again, if there is one part of the game which you need to be afraid of against BLG, it's when they get all of those out of turrets. Knight is going to get those on He's got on, he here. on He is not off right now. He is on a double Tangle Barb there, as well as the Pop Blossom. But they do save Knight, and he'll have his uh, 
Flash coming up soon. I mean, this is the problem with, you know, support, Nico. You don't exactly have the one-shot <laughs> potential of a mid lane one um, towards your first item, but still, just there. This is a big thing which Arn does. Whenever his mid lane radio carry a court, he just throws himself at the enemy team yeah, and says, okay, not? let's go for it. I like to call it a full contact League of Legends. <laughs> as soon as one person is caught, everyone just flies in to make something happen. On and 369 are both real big proponents of that style. Harold started up towards that top side. What have we got? We've got a uh, teleport from 369 and Bin if they want to influence proceedings. BLG, they could respond if they want. What's if they want to? I thought maybe they just go for the mark on the other side of the map, but they actually do TP. Yeah, that's nice. Nice gonna join the Rift Herald already gone, picked up by Mako. TP now in from top esports, been on the top side here. They will just get a bunch of summoner spells burned by both sides. Ah, uh, it's a safari around the around the Herald. You sat there like, if you look out to your right, you'll see the Herald being killed. They don't <laughs> do anything there. They don't exactly go towards the steel, but still, sadly for them, two teleports down just after they've blown creams. I thought that they could use that that um, that global advantage better, but sadly. Can't quite do that. Top Esports, once again, doing a really good job around the objectives. That's how they beat BLG last game, realistically. They just ended up having much better setup around the objectives when things got a little bit more crazy. Now we get to a point where we're a minute from another Dragon. It is a Mountain Soul this time around. I think both teams are going to be very happy with that. But we're in more of an even state of those objectives than we have been in the entire series so far. So I do expect these objectives to be contested on rotation. So... What does it mean to contest these objectives then? We can see that Shun is down towards this bot side, uh, at least getting some vision control first. He's not going to be able to get that scuffle. He's just hanging around in the back of this pit, seeing if he could do anything off of vision. No, he can't. So, vision control established for now for top esports. That will give them some extra ability to go allow 369 or Mako into a flanking position. Very important for them to have access yeah. to the backline. If you can get this miracle Rokan engaged, the cask on top of that, the Vi on top of that, I think BLG's team composition falls apart. So they need to do everything in their power to stop top esports getting to that back. For a series that has been all about momentum, even if it is just the second dragon for either side, it doesn't feel like it's going to be given over so easily. We have positioning from the mid lane from top esports. They're going to try to gain priority there with that Rift Heron pull. Get into the dragon pit. On has flash, has ult. He is a Nico of support. It's squishy, but you still have the CC and you've got a decent amount of damage. Harold put down as a counterweight in mid lane. Fush is in that mid lane. Makes it harder for BLG to get into river. He also has the flash engage. Find a big pop blossom, makes the difference. Now we have a mark over on Cream. The rest of the team coming in. Dragon started. Bin on the side. He will not be spotted. He has a full on flank. Cream has his. Weaver's Wall coming across to deny. They will be blocking them up. They don't have the damage to take the dragon. Yet. Early on that, you get the virus all through. The chance of crystal. No, no, it's the, cha the chance of corruption. Pop blossom on the four members. Oh my goodness. BLG take the dragon here now. No, they want the fight. That's the Emperor's Vibe going a bit wide from Knight. Look at Bin, though. He has bought enough time for the dragon to go down. And BLG, like they've done all series, will pull off of the fight. Oh, the Varasalt from Elk was absolutely phenomenal. Catches out the jungler unawares. And Tien goes down. Sadly for them, it will mean they give up a dragon, they give up a kill, and BLG, despite the fact that they didn't have the prime setup, just hit their skill shots and win the fight. It's going to be five grubs now used with, you know, triple range characters onto this mid lane out of turret. That's another tower down for them. Huge moment here. Big momentum. Three, four thousand gold in the lead now for BLG. It had been two thousand since eight minutes. We take a look back. So this this Weaver's Wall's too early, basically. It comes down just as the Varasol hits. You're not in position to smite for that dragon as well. And as it comes down, Om just goes straight in and goes for the juggler. And as we said, Knight puts them in check as well. Goes towards that flank and uh, really, really makes sure that the backline of top esports don't have the easiest time going forwards. And I I know you talked about on throwing his body. Sometimes that works, man. This yeah. guy uh, has been such an incredible. He's gotten props for missing for Mako. His play has improved so much in the last two years. And that's why I love focusing on these two bot lanes because we have very differing styles, right? Two carries on top esports that have been so good individually coming together. For BLG, they were not good individually. They had some <laughs> good moments, but together they are literally Megatron at this point, like they are unstoppable. Yeah, BLG, again, the reason why so many of these players can look good is because everyone is, has systems in place to help them play like that. They exactly. know that when they go in, someone's following them. When they're making plays on the map, they know they have a global in place. They know they have pushing lanes because everyone plays these lanes out as aggressively as humanly possible. It's all playing towards everything that they can. And it really does feel like BLG in this game are so, again, once again on point. Yeah. He, uh, 
has had some interesting moments in the past, but here, coming up clutch. As uh, there's the side lane pressure from Knight, trying to take down a final outer tower here for BLG. And uh, now we actually have full item spikes for everybody. As a second item has come across for Elk in the Edge of Night. A little bit more safety there for the Varus. Getting close to that second item for Jackie Love. Jack Love on this cluster. Again, we said it was going to be harder to team fight on the on hit Varus. Uh, not the Varus, the on hit. Uh, I mean, technically, that could go. This is the temple. Here comes oh, Elk. Shield they're under turret here. There's the body slam. And they're going to take down Elk. The double TP in for BLG. The pop loss of three members now, though. And what fight did you get? What did it cost you? And as Thanos says, everything as BLG will be rebuffed by the cask of 369. Bin has made the difference. Our oh, top esports. Let's dive too deep onto Elk. They go way too far, and BLG mop up. There's no Smite, there's no Callista, and Baron's on the table. We've seen BLG on this position before, as uh, they were the ones to stop Top Esports in a similar one. But BLG now forcing the hand of Top Esports. Here they come to answer. Mako goes in. Nice double grand entrance. Body slam on top of it all. But they have the damage right on to Mako and right on to Cream. Look at the flash from Shun. He wants to be the difference maker, and he's back the Lamb's respite to save the day. He doesn't go down, but honestly, Top East, what's stopping the Baron after losing jungle and AD carry? That's a huge win in my eyes. They don't end up getting any kills back, but the Baron being stopped after what should have been a game-changing fight is absolutely huge. We'll what, need to see what happens on the resets after this. This is what happens here in terms of what happens with the Varus. He hits himself an ult. What happens here in terms of the all-in, though? It's a half-elf Tian here. Does he end up getting his spell shield blown? It's the Pierce. Jackal ends wow. up using the Pierce towards it. It's a that good skill shot that. Really important, because if you don't blow that spell shield, this play is much harder to make out. On, however, on the other side of it, just punishes the over-engage. The initial yeah. pick, it's good, but they just go too far. And I think Bin's body in all of this is so difficult to deal with. He literally is just walking at Jackie Love and at Cream, and it becomes so much harder to navigate. Now, we did get that Aleandris completed for Cream. We are going to have a little bit of that damage potential, even if top esports are down 4,000 gold. And when you've got, you know, Renekton, Dash Champion, Kindred, Dash Champion, you've got the Azir as well. Uh, <laughs> there are, and even the Protobel, technically, from yeah. as well as a Dash. Um, this Talia, even if they don't hit the combo, can just deny a lot of angles for these champions to get themselves really clean team fights, which means that BLG, they need to choose their angles well. If they do, they might just walk away with a uh, third win. They might just walk away with their first championship as an organization. We have to go back to that, folks. This is for first seed at MSI. It is for an LPL championship. So many of these players, so many legendary players in the LPL will only ever see one title. BLG might just be, as an organization, and for a lot of these players, find their first. Three out of the five members would be their first ever LPL title in Shun, Elk, and On. On the other side, Cream in his first split with Top Esports. Mako in his first split with Top Esports. And 369 back home. They want to get this to five. They want to make good on Tien's promise of putting down Shun. Okay, so let's just take stock of things. Baron, Dragon up on, on a flank, has Flash. He's off vision, that's important. But Top Esports, they're hanging around towards bot side right now rather than top side. If they go towards top side in an unwise angle, maybe On finds himself something. He's spotted out now. 369, a little bit of trouble. Use the body slam out of there. Dragon has been started already down about 4,000 health here. Top Esports can use the Weaver's Wall. Block off. Shun is in the back of the pit, though. And Shun will take those all day. No, Tian gets the difference as now he will be burned down, though. He gets a flash out of Bin. Bin's on top of Tian. The cast comes through, but they wanted him the whole time. Cream was left out by his lonesome. And that's going to be the cleanse immediately bought by Jackie Love and trying to get out of that Chains of Corruption. Oh, the, now they're on the wrong side of the map. Shun walks forward. Top Esports. Oh, my God. They're so far from home, and I think they're getting sent back in caskets. My goodness. BLG are chasing down Jackie Love. And they're they're going to even pop the Pop Blossom, because why not? As they will take Top Esports to task here. Shun's looking on the other side. He's trying to chase down the big man. He's got some legs. He's got some moves. Let's see if he can get away. He might just be able to. You can maybe just teleport back to base. I think if he teleports out, though, the problem is that you lose Baron after this. On. Oh, oh, does he stop he it? Missed no, he it. misses he it. He missed the tangle barb. Oh, 369 makes it out alive. He goes to top lane. Thing is, though, he's half HP, and he can't come back to the play. So after these fights have gone so long, Baron now in favor of BLG. Tien denied the soul last time, the soul point last time around. 
They are not going to go for the 50-50, and honestly, it's a great call from DLG. Yeah, and I think the problem is when these plays go very long, but they don't quite work out, it means that your resets are a mess. One thing which Jamada said on the desk, yep. top esports were really working well within that mess. We've got an ult incoming from Mako. Knight already popped. They have so much damage. Look at Mako tanking those turret shots. Oh, he's not going to go down. The rocks are not enough. So Mako uses that W to go in. Of course, didn't have that ult. Just, uh, maybe that could have been different. Mako is again. It's the mess. Yo, yo the cask. Finn's still perfectly fine. Again, we said he's a crocodile. Fight forces, that's something he needs to be wary of. But still, top esports, they are trying to do what happened last game. Be able to try and get BLG to lose focus. Go into that mess yeah. and just say, look, we have a lot of veterans. We know our macro is clean. We have ourselves some really good globals and long range engage tools. Let's see if we can fight our way through the mess. And that's the beauty of what Top Esports have been approaching these last five, ten minutes off. They are literally roaming around the map together, trying to find these picks as best as possible. And particularly if you're out of position. There's a Vital, there's a Talia to combo right after that point. Vital Talia, nasty, nasty combo, especially with these items. And with all the things said and done, you know, Top Esports, it felt like they were handedly losing in a lot of these fights, but yep. they haven't lost the Baron. And it really does feel like um, Top Esports, their macro is again just, just a little bit more sharp than BLG in the mess. Yeah. The mid game has been their, their bread and butter. They have had so many quick decisions made that win them games over this season. A lot of people would have said, oh, it's BLG and, and JDG again yeah. in the finals. But Top Esports took them down. They've taken everything that was given to them. And now they need to take one more to bring it to Silver Scrape. You know, top Esports, you know, this is a team which a lot of people know of a history from the LPL because this is a team which has been in so many finals, they, uh, in finals, so many titles contested by them. 2023 was an off year for them. They didn't make it to a finals. They didn't make it to an international event, but this team expects excellence. They've shown glimpses of that excellence in this series. I'm going to show a little bit more. They're still down some gold. They're still necessarily, not necessarily out of this game. Three world champions. The veterancy <laughs> abounds for top esports as Shun has a little bit of trouble getting that blue buff. So a quick check in there as well. Somewhere amongst the mess, Shun on seven marks. Yep. Second range increase. Um, and he's getting towards those three items as well. He is going to hit like a truck. It is going to be very, very nasty. The double marksman cop starting to come online for DLT. There you go. All the rest on there. But the Baron has been started up a couple times now by BLG. Oh, they Top Esports again? moving around to try to catch out Knight on the transition okay. to this Baron pit. When we're looking into these kind of plays, playing around Fog of War again, trying to make sure the game doesn't become a horror survival. People jumping out of the darkness at you. You need to look at how many flashes are available. I think Shun has used this flash very, very well on the Kindred so far to get himself into those pockets of danger. Going into Fog of War, Cream starting to put out some big damage too. Yeah. Being chunked out just a little bit. You need to be very careful about this fog. Talia has been an unsung hero, it feels like. A lot of undertow damage. But we did get that side lane turret yet again, so that's all outers down for top esports. This has so often been, again, where BLG start to really run away with things because they can get those extra angles and there's no turret to spot you out anymore to force that wave into just more even place on the map. We've got Dragon coming up in 40 seconds. No real vision from Top Esports towards the bot side. I think there were one or two blue wards which are currently being covered by the portraits of uh, Talia and Vi. Use the word for a bit. Now BLG pushing up that mid lane. They got themselves a lot of items. I think particularly with the Azir getting to the point they have a lot of armor and inventory as well with the Frozen Heart with the Zhonyas. I wonder how Knight can be a more engaged factor as well at some point. To me, it feels like this fight, even though it's not for a soul, it's not for any lasting impact, it feels like we're on the precipice of the game deciding fight. It feels like with this 5,000 oh, oh, gonna get the flash out, that's big. Big thing, again, uh, one of the big things about LPL is that we fight to remove tools. We fight to remove things like these flash and these ultimates. However, with them committing towards bot side top, esports start up the Baron. They already do, and they will immediately pull back off of it. <laughs> they just wanted to get BLG's attention on the top side of the map here. On is uh, using his clone to spot out Tien. All five members over this way, except for the dragon being started up by not only Shun. Yeah. And uh, he's got Wolf there with him. Again, top esports. Again, I love how they're playing around the same. Okay, if you're trying to go towards the bot side, we'll go towards the other side. They're very coordinated about how they're moving across the map. You do see that they don't quite make it work this time. It's now Soul Point over to BLG. It's extra stats over to them, particularly to, you know, the, the more frontline members. And, uh, actually, Knight, actually, he's built up so much armor. That can be yeah. a big factor, too. Top esports they have managed to stop BLG closing the game and taking a game-ending Baron, but they're not really getting ahead. So we talked about the pick potential for top esports so many times. That is still feeling like the way into victory. But we have three item spikes for both Knight and Elk. Feels like you just want to take a front-to-back fight and take that ADC. And 
Oh, Kane's crushing goes wide. Double oh. claw blossom there, and they get him. That's a complete wipe. Top Esports have nothing left in the fight, and it's 369 that tries to make the difference with the cast, but it can't. And now on the other side, it's double kill for Shun, and it's BLG running away with it. It's the solo laners. It's the knight in shining armor that makes the killing blow. A team effort for BLG to turn the series. Calm, cool, and collected. Look at those faces. They have one goal in mind, and it's a first title for BLG. And you really want to see if they can do that, Tian. He's hanging around the outside of the pit. Can he get in? It would be a difficult one. He has a flash. He has an ult to carry him somewhere. Knight wants to block out the pit, though, and he'll do just that. Denied as the Baron goes over. Now Finn finds the angle over here on Tian. He might still have it, too, as the burn is starting to come through. Tian ends up backing away, but BLG, they move to topside. Baron on five people, huge, huge victory there for BLG. They slaughtered through towers. You got the Demolish, you got the five Grubs, you got the Baron, and this is gonna be Top Esports now scrambling. They have a flank teleport. This is them trying to slap back before BLG can make use of the Baron. They have to. Tempo plays have been the best thing for Top Esports. They're gonna try to pull it here. Cream. Double TP. Got Mako over on this top side. Got a weird angle from Knight. He's going to have to Shifting Sands his way out. He flashes immediately and does it. He is out of there, and it's Knight that makes Top Esports cry. I mean, you know, initially, oh, we got the fight continuing on. Literally, on to yeah. on. <laughs> Yeah, you know, eventually, this is a bit of a trivia piece for you out there. Knight initially wanted the name without the K at the start of it. He wants to be Knight, the darkness of it. Feels like he slipped away into the darkness there. He just put a random letter in front of his name. <laughs> turned out it turned into something else. and something truly legendary as well. This guy has been such a warrior, such a bodyguard for this team. He yeah. has not been the main character in he this series, but that play there shows exactly why, again, he can make those game-winning moments. Bin as well. Huge shout-out to him. Every fight this Renekton has oh, been crucial. Man. And Knight makes the difference again. Shoves him right into the mall of BLG, and our spring MVP is that for a reason. And now with, again, five Baron buffs available, we've got Flash available for Elk. If he wants to go for a Flash Varus play as well, maybe he can get involved in things as well. BLG are looking to push the dagger in. BLG lost in their only other finals. It was last spring against JDG 3-1. There is no longer any nightmare for them in front of them. They've taken down JDG for the first time in two years. They have taken Top Esports down a peg, and now they're on the cusp. Top Esports, they are scrambling. Can they wave clear in time? How far is this going to be pushed by BLG? It's two inhibitors. They're sticking around. They have the five grubs. They are looking to go a little they further. Want it. They want it so bad, Nightmare. They want to finish the game right now. One Nexus turret goes down. The BLG, all they need are a couple more structures, and they are champions. BLG, they have built towards this. There Here goes Tien. Last gasp effort. Can Top Esports, the might, go down? They are done as they lose their main engage. It's one thing. Have they managed to survive? Is the blood enough to buy space? Oh, the flash! Goes, they get him! Oh my gosh. BLG, they've done it. They've got one. They've got two. They are on the cusp, and they've done it. They are on the road, and they make it to silver, and the Dragon Cup will go their way for a first time in BLG's history. They are champions. This team has built over years, over time, loss after loss, it felt like last year, but they finally see themselves to the podium. This has been their mountain climb. It has been well earned. It has been hard fought. And I am so excited to see how much further this team can go. Not only do they bring in Knight, not only do they find strength in their early games, they have done a double record-breaking split in summer and spring. Now they return, and for the first time in the organization's history, but also for Shun, Elk, and On, it is their first title and much deserved. Knight completes himself in his own way as well. A three-peat of LPL. Very rare to find these occurrences. Very rare to find a team like this in BLG. And Billy Billy Gaming, for the first time, will lift the Silver Dragon Cup. Chengdu, beware! Huge congratulations to the team. Huge congratulations to that man right there, Elk and Shun and On. Not only were they the newer pieces, the ones without the titles, but they were the ones it felt like were the driving force of this game.